Britain, France and Germany lobbied furiously to try and stop President Trump ditching the disastrous Iran nuclear deal and now they're trying to keep it alive. Of course, they dress it up as high principle, but the truth is that for them, it's about more money for their big business cronies. Yes, the swamp is truly global. Britain has pushed numerous business interests in Iran since the Obama deal lifted sanctions, including their telecoms company Vodafone partnering with Iranian internet firm HiWeb to help modernize its network. And in 2017, British officials agreed to a $720 million deal to create a solar energy park in Iran with investors from Asia, Europe and the Middle East. Germany is even more swampy. After sanctions were lifted, car maker Volkswagen reached an agreement with Iran's Mammut Kodro to sell two of their models there. And German manufacturing giant Siemens signed a contract worth at least 1.5 billion euros to build rail coaches and upgrade train tracks in Iran. But here's the swampiest German, and this is truly shocking. One of the biggest impacts of new sanctions would be on energy. And Russia, in particular, giant Russian state oil and gas companies, Rosneft and Gazprom, both have interests in Iran. Guess who is now head of the executive board at Rosneft and also chairman of the board of directors at Nord Stream 2, a subsidiary of Gazprom? Gerhard Schroeder, Angela Merkel's predecessor as chancellor of Germany. The former German leader is on the board of Russia's biggest energy companies. Since Russia's got practically no economy apart from energy, that's basically like being on the board of Russia. And the elites accuse Donald Trump of collusion. But perhaps the country deepest in the Iran swamp is France. In December 2016, French airplane manufacturer Airbus signed a deal with Iran Air to sell it 100 planes for around $19 billion. Another French aircraft maker, ATR, struck a $536 million deal with Iran Air for 20 planes. French oil giant Total SA signed a 20-year, $5 billion contract with Iran and a Chinese oil company to develop an Iranian natural gas field. And French car maker Peugeot got a deal to open an Iranian plant producing 200,000 vehicles a year. It turns out that one-fifth of Peugeot's entire global market is in Iran. And you'll also be interested to discover that the former Rothschild banker who once worked on a bailout of Peugeot is none other than Emmanuel Macron, now president of France. I think we'd all take these globalist elite politicians a bit more seriously when they condemn Donald Trump for pulling out of the nuclear deal if they themselves weren't up to their necks in their own swamp deals with Iran.